Thank you for joining us today. We hope this teaching inspires you, builds your faith, and gives you tools for everyday life. We encourage you to visit us at mbcocala.com to discover more about the life-changing ministry at Meadowbrook, as well as convenient ways you can partner with us financially in helping people move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Enjoy the message. Well, good morning. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. Let's go ahead and stand together. We're going to pray and get into the Word today. Are you excited? All right. That makes all of us. So let's lift our hands to the Lord today. Father, we love you today. We thank you once again for your kindness to us. Thank you for ordering our steps, bringing us here today. And I believe with all my heart, Lord, that you have something for every one of us today. And help me, Lord, to deliver your Word in the right way. Help us to connect the dots today. And I just thank you that the Spirit of the living God breathe upon us, fall fresh upon us, touch us anew today. And I pray that when we leave here in just a little bit, we're gonna leave way stronger, way better than when we came in today. And I pray that when everything is said and done today, that you, Jesus, the Lord of our life, the head over all things to this church, may you be pleased, may you be honored, and may these your people, every single one of them be helped today that is our prayer in jesus name and everybody said amen amen hey how about a huge welcome for our east campus east welcome today it's going to be a great morning glad you're here also another big welcome for our online campus come on give it up for them god bless you so glad you're with us peace to your house you may be seated you may be seated we're glad all of you are here today I want to start a, just a two-part series, which is really odd for me. Those of you who have been here for years know that one time I did a 28-week series on momentum. I couldn't stop. But this is just a two-parter called Kingdom Builders. Everybody say Kingdom Builders. Let's start out in the Gospel of Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. It says, now after John, John the Baptist, was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, watch this, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Let me just put it this way. Change your life. Change your attitude. Change your mind. Change your direction. And believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news of the kingdom of God. This was Jesus' central message. Um, Let's look at this word, first of all, kingdom. Kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Kingdom. How many of you know Jesus is king? Okay, the Bible and Kanye both got that right. Jesus (laughs) Jesus is king. And kingdom, by definition, means this. It's God's reign. It's under God's reign. It's the place of God's rule, okay? And so just like, you know, the concept we would have of a king and his subjects, you know, that would be the same for us. This is 87 times in the gospel, 137 times in the New Testament, major, major central focus issue um, in the New Testament, actually through the whole Bible. And Jesus said the kingdom is at hand. He's saying the kingdom has arrived, the kingdom is arriving, the kingdom is in breaking. And so the kingdom, understand this, The kingdom is, first of all, in our hearts. Everybody say, in my heart. And that's that God would rule in my life, in my heart, in my life, in my relationships. You know, the kingdom can be uh, where you live. Uh, The kingdom can be in your school, on your farm, at your place of business. The kingdom can be in relationships. The kingdom can be there. How many of you also know that it can be obvious that the kingdom is there? How many of you know that sometimes it's obvious the kingdom ain't there? Okay? So I want you to bear that in mind because there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of light and there's the kingdom of darkness. And we've been called out of the darkness. We've literally been rescued. I mean, this is special ops, (laughs) y'all. Captain Jesus in charge rescued us. And we've been transferred, translated into the kingdom of the son of his of his love and I'm thankful that we can come out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of light come on somebody say amen today now let's look and and realize that the kingdom uh, one day one day will be everywhere 
One day all will acknowledge the rule of God, the reign of God. Look with me quickly in Matthew chapter 6. In this manner, and this is the Lord's Prayer, therefore pray. And we're just going to do a few lines of this. Go ahead and do it with me here. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, the kingdom comes by invitation. And the kingdom comes by cooperation. One of the signs of the kingdom coming is his will being done. And so the kingdom comes in such a way. So we are to pray. We're to pray for the kingdom to come. We invite the kingdom into our hearts and into our lives. Nod your head if you're following so far, okay? All right, then look with me at Matthew 6, verse 33. Jesus still speaking, Sermon on the Mount. He said, but seek, come on, this important word, first, the what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And so not only do we pray for the kingdom, but we seek the kingdom. And you seek the kingdom, what? You seek the kingdom first. You put this first. God's rule in your life, you put that first. And this is what happens as a result of seeking the kingdom first is it brings divine order to your life. Because if first things are not first, then everything else is out of order. Okay? So if first things are not first, he to be number one. And, and I say this sometimes. It doesn't say seek only the kingdom of God because they're good and noble and fun and other things that, that we do in our life. But you seek first or everything else will be out of order. It's by putting him first, he brings a divine order into our lives. Nod your head if you're with me on that one so far. Okay, so we're going to take a quick deep dive uh, into some theology, okay? And we're even going to get into something called eschatology. So theology is the study of God, the ways of God, the works of God. Eschatology, have y'all heard of that before? Somebody say, I think I had that before and the doctor gave me a cream to put, <laughs> put on my... I got a really bad case of eschatology. Now, eschatology is the study of last things, last days. So this has a little bit to do with the timeline of it all. So we're going to look at uh, the big story of the, of the Bible. Um, everybody, you should have a Bible. Now, I'm so thankful I can have it on my phone or tablet or computer or whatever, but you, you need to have a Bible. Y'all with me? Well, I don't have one. We'll get one. Well, I don't know where to get one. You get one. You know how to find everything else. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> you can prime that puppy and get it in a couple days. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm thankful, and I use, you know, electronic, but, there, you know, I'd rather have a fireplace than just the electric blanket. Y'all know what I'm saying? And, and, and to have it open, maybe I'm, maybe I'm old school, old fashioned, but I tell you what, it's just something very personal. Thank you, you can have it. Here's an invitation card for Easter. Just <laughs> fell out of my Bible. Thank you for your help there. But get you a Bible. Well, I don't know which one to get. You can go online and, and read comparatively and, and read um, by default. Most of the time I use the New King James Version. Uh, I love the English Standard Version, New International Version, New Living Translation. If you want a more of a paraphrase, you can get the message. And uh, they're out there. Scope them out. Well, I need to know which one. You got two of everything else. Get, get you a couple, okay? <laughs> and Christmas is coming. Well, no one will buy me one. Buy one for yourself. Get a Bible. Okay, that's, that's my point today. So what we have is a big story, a big story. Everybody say big story. If we just look at the big story of Scripture, we find that it started in a garden and it ends in a garden. And so if you don't know what's in between, you think, well, that's awesome, but not very exciting. You know, it started out perfect and it ends up even better. But see, the reality is, like every story, you have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have the end. And the beginning started in a garden, started with everything great, and then sin entered, which ruins everything, always does. God set a plan in motion, and we watch that plan happening, and we're in this part right here. We're in the middle, okay? Here's, here's a clue for us. At the end, all things will be made new. At the end, everything is taken care of. 
At the end, uh, there's rewards and other things, okay? At the end, everything is made right, and I just want you to know we're not at the end yet. We're somewhere in the middle, probably toward the end of the middle, headed toward the end, but wherever we are, we have to pay attention to this. Now, all of God's promises are fulfilled in and through Jesus. So we're going to take a little deep theological dive. I'm going to stay real close with my notes so that we can, uh, I just want to summarize something for you, get this real clear in our thinking because this is going to take us somewhere today. So all of God's promises are yes and amen in him. They are fulfilled in and through Jesus. But not all the promises are fully present, the answers to them, or fully manifest in our lives yet. We're living in something that is called, look at this, we're living in something that's called the already and the not yet. So we live where we are in the already, but there's also the, the not yet. Now in theology, there's something called redemptive history. And what that is, that's the whole story and timeline of our redemption. And in that is something called inaugurated eschatology. You don't have to remember that, but it means this, inaugurated eschatology, it's, it's been inaugurated. It is started and it is begun, but the timeline is still continues. So we are in, come on, read it with me, the already and the not yet. Now, let's explain this a little bit further. The kingdom has come, but there's more of the kingdom to come. Okay? So the kingdom has come, but there's more of the kingdom to come. So we've received salvation. We've received of eternal life. We've received forgiveness of sins. We've received the Holy Spirit in our lives. But how many of you know there's more to come? There's more to come of, of the kingdom. And let me point this out. We've been given the Holy Spirit who is our helper and comforter, and when we get to the not yet, when we get to the end of the story, we're not going to need help and comfort. But we sure need help and comfort now. So in the already, we've been given the Holy Spirit, and then there's plenty more that is yet to come. So it is important that we understand we're in the already. We've been given so much. But you're wondering why, you know, why isn't my life perfect? I gave it to Jesus. Can I tell you why? Because we're in the already, but there's still a not yet. We're not yet in heaven and the fullness of the kingdom. We're still in Florida. Okay? So he's given us so many things. This helps us to understand some questions and some situations. Well, I had some prayers I don't think were answered, or I knew somebody that didn't get healed, or why isn't this situation all good, or this all resolved, and how come bad guys get away with things? And see, part of it has to do with where we are at in all of this, and there's already so much that has been given to us by God, but there's so much more that is yet to come. The kingdom has come, the kingdom is present, but we have not seen the kingdom in the fullness of its glory yet. We haven't seen the full expression and manifestation of the kingdom. We do not yet see the kingdom in its fullness. The kingdom of God is in you, the kingdom of God is with you, but as I said, there's more of the kingdom to come. If you think you're tracking with me, just bob your head just a little bit so I know we're, all right, good, good. Now, Jesus was the first fruits Okay, and the resurrection describes that he's the first fruit, but how many of you know not yet? Not yet is the full harvest of the resurrection yet. That's all yet to come for us as well. So God has worked, God is working, God is not finished working. So look at this with me real quick. We have the ages past, we have this present age, and we have the ages to come. Come on, read these with me real quick. The ages past, this present age, and the ages to come. And this is right from Scripture here. So because of Jesus, watch this, because of Jesus, some of the ages to come are in this present age. So some of, how many of you know you do not find peace naturally on this planet? It does not grow here. It has to be shipped in. 
from the motherland. Okay? We are ambassadors. We get our supplies from elsewhere. People without Jesus do not have peace. It's not in that kingdom. It's in our kingdom. It's in the kingdom of God. And so there are things from the ages to come because of what Jesus has brought to us that are now in this present age. Let me put it to you this way. The things will be, the the way things will be has crashed and kind of invaded into the way things are. So we are able to pray. We are able to get answers to prayer. We are able to get some peace. We are able to get some help. How many of you have any, any favor from God? Any protection from God? Any provision from God? What about the rest of you? <laughs> and so we're living in the already and the not yet. And I want to try to make that really, really clear. We're looking forward to the fullness. We're looking forward. We're so thankful for what God does in our life. But you and I have to, have to admit this, that the fullness and the, 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 the fullness of the promises and of the kingdom is not yet full or full time in our lives. How many of you have some tough stuff in your life? Okay. Now let me go a little bit further. Look with me in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, so your troubles, your situations, they're momentary, they're light, comparative, are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Watch. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It's from the ages to come. Look with me in the message paraphrase. So we're not giving up. Come on, say that with me. So we're not giving up. I mean, how could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times, I love this, these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times the lavish celebration prepared for us. Watch. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. Look with me in Revelation 21, verse 4. And God will wipe away. This is in the ages to come, okay? God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be, come on, no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, no more bills, no more homework. I added those in associated with pain. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. He said at the end of the book, I make all things new. How many of you know that right now all things don't look like they're new? And if we right now are living in the fullness of the kingdom, well, I'm a little disappointed. But we are living in immense blessing, immense presence of God. But I want you to know we're in the already, but there's some not yet that's out in front of us. So don't get bogged down in the temporary. Don't get bogged down in the now. All of this points ahead. You're you're to keep looking ahead. Look up, look ahead, lean forward, and keep your hope. Because even though we don't have everything right now, I'm telling you what, it's in the yet to come. Amen? Now listen to me. Any wholeness, any beauty is a foretaste of what is to come. How many of you have any beauty in your life? Seven of you. (laughs) How many of you have any wholeness in your life? What about this? Any peace in your life? Any answered prayers? Any favor? Any protection? Is God working at all in your life? Then get this, any wholeness, blessing, restoration, forgiveness, answered prayer, blessing, peace, the list goes on. It's just a foretaste. It's a sample. It's a sample of what's to come. It's an appetizer for the meal that we will have. Okay? So 
Remember this, I, I remember as a kid, and then watching all my kids do the same thing. You're in the grocery store, you're in, you're in Sam's Club, you're in Walmart or um, uh, Costco, and at the end of the aisles, they got people set up with trays and they got little samples. And they got little sausage and cheese and different stuff with, you know, with toothpicks stuck in them. And you go up there, can I have one? And I, one for my cousin, too. And we run off with these things, and we find the next tray. Can I tell you something? That's where we are now. That's where we are in our life. We're in the big store, and we're finding a few awesome things. But can I tell you, they're samples. The blessings you have in your life, the answered prayers you have in your life, the peace, the favor you have in your life right now, it's just a sample. It's just an appetizer. Wait till we get home. Wait till we have dinner. Okay, this is just samples. So Jesus brought the kingdom, and Jesus is building the church. Now follow this. We, we've come up from our dive now, and then we're climbing up on shore. We live in the tension of the already and the not yet. Jesus brought the kingdom, but there's more of the kingdom to come. And in this time that we're in, Jesus said, I will build my church. Jesus is building the church. So we, everybody say we. We, we the church, gathered, distributed. Gathered, distributed. You get the idea? You're supposed to come here. And we come in and we lift up and we listen up and then we go, what? We go, live it out. The church gathered and distributed we are supposed to be participating in God's kingdom purposes in the earth. Do you hear me? God's kingdom has come. Jesus is building his church. There's more of the kingdom to come, and he wants us as his church, as we gather and as we leave, to make sure we are participating in kingdom purposes in the earth. And here's why. Look with me in 2 Peter Second Peter chapter 3, God isn't late with his promises as some measure lateness. He is restraining himself on account of you. Watch this. Holding back the end. This strikes me every time I read it. God is holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. Do you see that, folks? We're living in a zone. Everybody say a zone. zone. We're living in a zone in, the, in this present age because the age is to come. We're living in a zone where God is literally holding back the end, Scripture says, and he's making space and time so that people can come to him. That's the zone that we're living in. So what do we do during this time? We, we must be involved. We must be invested with God's kingdom projects and God's kingdom purposes in the earth. We need to do everything we do in Jesus' name with the end goal, I want to make an eternal impact. Are you hearing me? So if you play drums or you fly a plane or you teach a class or you run a farm or you're, you're raising kids or you're, you know, you, what, whatever you're doing in life, whatever you're doing in life, do it in Jesus' name. Do you hear me? God's holding back the end. He's made time. He's made space, not for us just to do stuff, but to do his stuff, to be connected and participating in kingdom, kingdom initiatives so that we make an eternal impact. C.T. Studd, famous quote right here, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. Now, and it's important we understand in this zone that we're in that we're not stuck and unaware of where we are in time because then you're going to get all caught up and distracted by all the temporary stuff where you want to go and what you want to have and things you want to do and trips you want to take. And all those things are good in their rightful place, but you've got to seek first the kingdom. And it would be horrible, too, to be in this zone that God is holding back the end and making time and space. And we're walking around frustrated, unforgiveness, no purpose, no hope, negative, 
caught up in the wrong and temporary things, overly focused on whatever it would be going on, be it politics or what, just overly focused on all those things. These things too shall pass. And we can't get so over-focused on the temporary that we forget, hey, we're here now for such a time as this, in this time, in this place where God is holding back, making time and space so that people can come to him. So you and I are to be kingdom seekers, that we put the kingdom first so that brings a divine order to our life. Can you say amen today? We're to be kingdom prayers where we invite the kingdom of God. I mean actively. That's part of what I'm doing every time I come and go from my house and I say peace to this house because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so we want to seek the kingdom. We want to pray regarding the kingdom. And then we also need to be kingdom builders, that we're involved, that we're invested in kingdom projects, kingdom purposes, so that we can help to make an eternal impact. Can I get a good amen out of you today? Now, I've been sharing with you for about the last month that we've, we've got a kingdom builder project coming up, a vision project. And I want to share with you something about that real quick. First of all, for almost three years, we've had something we call kingdom builders. And let me give you a definition here for kingdom builders. Kingdom builders are a group of people in our church who prayerfully commit to invest financially in making a kingdom impact. A kingdom builder helps fund vision projects. So this is like an over and above thing that will ultimately leave a legacy for the kingdom of God. It is open to anyone who's committed to give over and above the tithe each year. I want to show you a couple of things. Just in the last two and a half years, kingdom builders, because of kingdom builders, we've been able to give a half a million dollars into local, national, and global missions. Further, yeah, come on, give God some praise. (laughs) Through kingdom builders, over and above the regular, almost $800,000 to launch and start up. A lot of equipment and things and, and supplies involved in launching our East Campus. Come on, give East Campus a good welcome today. Go ahead, the next one. And then to operate the first year, which we just completed, and now they're, they're meeting budget all the time themselves, uh, $242,000. Kingdom Builders was able to make that happen. Yeah. Go ahead. Unbeknownst to you, just a couple of months ago, we re-roofed this whole place. And this place is about the size of a Walmart. Y'all hear me? And, and it's, not, it's not very cool to say, hey, uh, could you help us re-roof? But it's something that had to happen so we can continue. Some of y'all on rainy days were in here and you just thought it was heaven dripping on you. And, and we had to do this. And you know what? To re-roof this whole thing and also to insulate it better too, $373,000. We didn't have to come back to you and say, let's do it through Kingdom Builders that we were able to do that and pay that in full. Uh, security is very important to us, especially in these days. For you, for your vehicles, most of all for your children. So we have a lot of security involved in everything that we're doing. We're currently undergoing some technological upgrade as well to the tune of about $75,000. And because of kingdom builders, people involved in kingdom builders, we don't have to come back and ask for that. We're able to already do this. This is already in place. Amen. Right now, this is beginning to be going on for about another month or so, but we're redoing the whole parking lot because the parking lot needs it, so it's going to be looking sweeter and sweeter, and this way you can stay between your lines. (laughs) Paid for, paid for. Then our academy, we had to do some major upgrades this, this past summer. Uh, over a quarter of a million dollars, and we were able to do that. So for the last two and a half, almost three years, $2.3 million through Kingdom Builders. We've been able to take care of kingdom projects to help us so that we can do what we do all in Jesus' name so that we can make sure that we are making the best eternal impact that we can. Which brings me to this. Which brings me to this. Next week, and I've been talking about this for about a month, next week, we, we, 
we need to, through Kingdom Builders, do about $750,000 to do an audio, video, lighting upgrade here at the central campus, which is our broadcast campus. What happens here, technology gets outdated quickly, and we've got some key equipment that's 10 years old and older. And what this is all for is to enhance what we're doing here, but everything that goes out of here as, quote, our broadcast campus to the East Campus, to our online campus, to online, to uh, the app, to YouTube, to our video outreaches, all the different ways that this is going out. This is a vital thing that we need to make happen. We leverage and embrace technology here so that we can get the message of the kingdom as far as we can because truly we're trying to make an eternal impact. And so next week on the 24th, I'm going to ask you, every one of you, just over and above your regular giving, just you ask God, what should I do? And I want, last week we talked about all of us being all in on this, and you watch what God will do. I have great confidence in this because I just showed you some track record here that God will help us to do this. And uh, the quicker that uh, next week will be the kickoff on this. And uh, then as soon as we get things together, we'll be able to order things and get things going because I believe we should pay for it. And, uh, you know, not just put it on our kids or something, but uh, we'll, we're going to begin this next week. So everybody do that. We're going to do a special offering at the end of the service. So if you're, if you're giving regular, do this separate too. And I'm going to send you an email video this week too if we have your email. Just talk to you about it a little bit more. And this is the thing. This is not just buying equipment. This is a way that we can enhance what we're doing, enlarge what we're doing, and do with excellence using technology to get this message of the kingdom. It's a kingdom project that you and I, let's all be involved in this so that we can truly make a difference and help people to move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So often when people are in darkness, if they only knew there was light, if they only knew there was a better way, they can come out. And I'm telling you what, life in the kingdom in this present age is way better than any other life, and yet there's still more to come. Amen? And so I just want to thank you in advance, pray, ask God what you're to do, and I want to give, give two invitations before I finish today. First of all, if you're not in the kingdom already, I invite you, come into the kingdom of God. Receive Jesus as king. And secondly, if you're not already a kingdom builder, be a kingdom builder. Help us to do these kingdom projects that we have prayerfully and, and carefully have planned together that we believe will truly, truly have a lasting impact. I got to stop right there. Did y'all get anything at all out of this today? Amen. Thanks again for listening to this message resource for Meadowbrook. You can stay connected by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NBC Ocala.